Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gav the Mass974 back again today doing a different kind of video. What I'm going to do today is try to get the hammer editor, which is what you use to create levels for Source Engine games like Portal, Half-Life 2, Counter-Strike, Left 4 Dead, working on Linux operating systems. Now there's two things I need to say right from the get-go. One is that from some of the footage that you'll be seeing right now, I wanted to do this video way back in April, early April and it's getting to the end of September right now so I apologize for delaying this video for as long as I have and the second thing is that the hammer editor isn't meant to work on Linux natively if there was a version of the hammer editor that works on Linux then this video would become redundant pretty much immediately um, so what we're going to be doing is getting a compatibility layer tool called wine and running the Hammer Editor through Wine on Linux to try and get a Windows only application running on a different operating system. So because of that, there, there's gonna be some issues, it's not going to work perfectly, so be prepared for some stuff to not work and don't blame me for that. Um, just wanted to get that off my chest now before I get comments complaining that it doesn't work well because that's just the way it is, unfortunately. So as I go through the video, there's going to be references to either Debian-based or Arch-based Linux operating systems. I believe these are the two main bases for Linux operating systems, and if I'm wrong on that, then correct me in the comments. But I would say that Debian-based operating systems would be operating systems like Debian, Ubuntu, or Fedora, and Arch-based operating systems would be Arch Linux, Manjaro, and SteamOS. The Steam OS, which is what the Steam Deck uses. So technically, yes, you can get the Hammer Editor working on the Steam Deck. And hopefully by following this video, you can make that happen. And towards the end of the video, I'll talk about my experiences and how well the Hammer Editor ends up working. So the first step is to download Steam, obviously. You can use a graphical software browser if you really want to. However, I feel a better way would be to use the terminal or the console or basically the command line interface for the version of Linux that you're using. And for Debian based operating systems, you want to do sudo apt-get install steam. And on Arch based Linux, you want to use uh, sudo pacman dash capital S and steam. So sudo means you need to be a super user to be able to download and install stuff. And it's basically calling on package managers to find Steam, acquire it, download it and install it on your system. So once this has been downloaded and installed, you want to boot into Steam. It will update. So you just want to wait for that and then log into your account. And when Steam opens up, it would look exactly like you would expect it to look. So now we move on to step two, which is to download whatever source game you want. So in my case, I'll use Half-Life 2 as an example, and it will download the Linux version of that source game onto your Linux operating system. However, for what we want to do, we need to gain access to the Windows binaries. So how can we go about doing that? Well, there's actually something pretty interesting that we can use, which is the Steam console. So to be able to gain access to the Steam console, you need to load up the terminal, the console, the command line interface, whatever it is on your Linux operating system. And you want to type in steam, then steam colon forward slash forward slash open forward slash console. So what this should do is load up steam, but you get a console tab after your username tab. So at this point, what you want to do is navigate to steamdb.info, which is a third party Steam database. And you want to search the game that you've downloaded. So in my case, I'll just look up Half-Life 2. And there's two things you want to keep track of. Number one is the app ID number for the game. And two is the Windows client depot number. So in my case, Half-Life 2 has an app ID of 220. And the Windows client has a depot number of 222. So if we go back to our Steam console, then in the actual console itself, you want to do download underscore depot of app ID and then the Windows client depot number. So I would do download depot of 220 and 222. 
So by following this, this downloads the Windows binaries to on Debian based operating systems home slash dot steam slash Debian dash installation slash Ubuntu 12 underscore 32 and then Steam apps content app 220 in my case because 220 is Half-Life 2 and Depot 222 which is the Windows binaries Depot. And for Arch based systems, you want to go to home forward slash dot local forward slash share forward slash steam forward slash Ubuntu 12 underscore 32, then Steam apps content app 220 and depot 222. So, what you want to do is find that location on your Linux operating system and copy the bin folder, and you want to copy it into your source games appropriate directory. So for Debian based systems, I believe this is at home forward slash dot steam forward slash steam, then steam apps common and half life two. And for arch based Linux, you want to go to home forward slash dot local forward slash share forward slash steam, then steam apps common half life two. Now there shouldn't be any file conflicts because Linux works fundamentally differently than Windows. So you should have stuff like the hammer editor, the face poser and STD shaders and stuff like that all in this bin folder on Linux. And it's a combination of the Linux bin and Windows bin folders. So at this point we can get wine. And so on Debian based Linux, you want to do sudo apt-get install wine tricks. And on Arch based Linux, you want to do sudo pacman dash capital S wine tricks. So once this is installed, you can simply go into your command line interface and type in wine tricks. And it should load up a window where we can select what we want to do. We can create a 32 bit architecture because uh, from my experience, some of the components that we're going to be downloading cause issues when using a 64 bit architecture. But you can call the architecture whatever you want. And then you want to choose install a Windows DLL or component and you want to select .NET 20, .NET 48 and everything from and including VC1 2003 all the way through to VC1 2015. Then you want to proceed through all of the installers and from my experience some of these fail, don't really know why. And you can download the 64-bit versions of these as well. I think some of them just don't work on Linux for some reason. And so with that being done, you want to navigate to your Half-Life 2 bin folder and load up a terminal from that directory, which you can do by right clicking in the directory and choose to open up a command line interface from there. And then you want to type in wine console and then hammer.bat. And so what this should do is boot into the hammer editor for whatever source game it is that you installed. As long as you have followed the steps I've outlined and tailored them for the source game that it is that you wish to play. So I know for a fact this isn't going to work perfectly. Uh, from my experimentation, I couldn't use the mouse to look around in the 3D view properly. Sometimes it just didn't work at all. And sometimes I can move up and down, but not left and right. So it makes mapping a bit tricky. And also I didn't really fully check to see if stuff like the texture browser worked, if the model browser worked, if the sound browser worked. So I believe the model browser had some issues, especially on Arch Linux. Yeah, this is the issue with running through Rhine that you're going to end up with these kind of problems. Now there is an optional step you can do, which is to download Hammer++ instead of using the bog standard Hammer editor. And so for Half-Life 2, you would get the 2013 single player version of the Hammer editor and then simply copy and paste the contents to the Half-Life 2 bin directory and then do wine console of hammer++.exe and this should load into Hammer++. Now for my experimentation, I had even more issues um, because I couldn't look around with the mouse at all. And from the basis for this video, there are supposedly some bash scripts, which is Linux scripting that you could do to apparently help out. And I don't think that helped at all. I think it actually, it actually fucked me over more than helped me. So that's not good. And I can only assume it's because I used a virtual machine instead of using a native install. 
So that could be cause for some of the issues that I experienced. However, I tried this on the Steam Deck and I couldn't get the Hammer Editor working at all. Um, the 3D viewport just didn't initialize properly, as well as the 2D viewports. So if you wanted to make a map on the Steam Deck, then it's probably very difficult to do. Although, at least from what I've seen online, if you use Proton, you can get the Hammer Editor working on the Steam Deck, but I wouldn't know how to do that. And so the possible improvements I have to say is to make the Hammer Editor work natively on Linux. That is much, 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 much easier said than done. I don't have the knowledge or the expertise to make that happen. Supposedly, the Hammer Editor uses Windows only binaries, which is why you have to use stuff like Wine on Linux to get the Hammer Editor kind of working. Um, so, my possible suggestions would be to create a Hammer Editor that is an imitation that is based off of inspection of what the Hammer Editor actually does. So, you understand that you need three 2D viewports, one 3D viewport, some of the tools like snapping to the grid and the carve tool and stuff like that you just know from inspection that's what you have to do to get it to do what you want it to alternatively you can use leaked source code um, because there are you know hammer code source leaks out there that you can look up and find and you could try to bypass the windows only stuff to get a version of the hammer editor working on linux Unfortunately, I wouldn't know what to do, as I previously stated, and it is rather unfortunate that from my experimentation, the Hammer Editor or Hammer++ just didn't really work too well. So it pretty much means if you want to do source levels, stay on Windows, and maybe one day in the very distant future, someone can make a version of the Hammer Editor that works on Linux or, or on Mac OS. It's not going to be me. So I wanted to get this video done a very long time ago. I'm sorry it took so long for the video to come out. And I'm sorry for it not working very well. That's just uh, an issue with source stuff and working on Linux. It's just conflicts all the time. So let me know what you think in the comments section down below. What you think if you want me to do more Linux stuff or not. And yeah, just take care out there everyone. Peace out and have a great day. See you next time.